why was Einstein more than just a world-renowned physicist? Einstein supported unpopular causes. The year he moved from Switzerland to Germany. He joined a group of people opposing Germany's entry into World Was I. He joined both socialist and pacifist causes. He opposed the Nazis, and when Adolf Hitler, 1889-1945, came to power, Einstein moved to the United States. He took a position at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. Some years later he became a citizen of the United States. After being urged by other physicists, Einstein signed a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882-1945, pointing out the danger posed by Germany's work on uranium that could lead to a dangerous new kind of bomb. The letter helped to launch the Manhattan Project that lead to the development of the atomic bomb. Although Einstein did not actually work on the bomb, after the defeat of Germany. And knowing the death and destruction that dropping the bomb would cause. He sent another letter to the president urging him not to use the bomb. The letter was never forwarded to President Harry Truman, 1884-1972. After the war Einstein spent time lobbying for atomic disarmament. At one point he was even asked to head the new Jewish state of Israel. What is the structure of the atom? Thomson pictured the atom as a swarm of electrons in a positively charged sphere. This model is called the plum pudding model, after a then favorite English Christmas treat. Americans might picture a ball of pudding filled with raisins. The New Zealand born physicist Ernest Rutherford, 1871 to 1937, developed a method of testing Thomson's model. Rutherford's first scientific work was done in Montreal, Canada beginning in 1898. He and Frederick Soddy conducted a study of radioactivity and radioactive materials that won Rutherford the 1908 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Those experiments will be described in the chapter on nuclear physics, at the heart of the atom. He studied the radiation emitted by thorium and uranium, which he named alpha and beta rays. He recognized that alpha rays would be ideal probes for studying materials. Rutherford moved to the University of Manchester in Britain in 1907 where he worked with Hans Geiger. 1882-1945 later to invent the Geiger counter on ways of detecting individual alphas. They determined that the alpha particles were doubly charged. They allowed the alphas to go through a window made of very thin mica. A mineral that could be cut into very thin slices. He noticed that the rays that penetrated the mica were deflected slightly more than they should have been by a plum pudding atom. With Geiger and Ernest Marsden, he directed a beam of alphas on extremely thin foils of gold. To their great surprise they found a significant number of alphas were deflected into very wide angles some greater than 90 degrees. 
Rutherford commented that it was as if a 15 shell from a naval cannon bounced off a sheet of tissue paper. The Rutherford model, as pictured above, is used in many common symbols. Like that of a nuclear power plant or the flag of the International Atomic Energy Agency. By 1911 Rutherford had developed his own model of an atom. It consisted of an extremely small positively charged particle. Later called the nucleus, surrounded by electrons. Although the paths of the electrons were not mentioned in the 1911 paper. It was later assumed that they orbited the nucleus as planets orbit the sun. The nucleus was 1 slash 10 comma 0 0 0 as large as the atom. But had all the positive charge and essentially all of its mass. If the atom's mass was equal to n hydrogen masses, then the nuclear charge was about n slash 2. The electrons carry a total charge equal and opposite that of the nucleus so that the atom would be electrically neutral. Rutherford's atom is mostly empty space. What is precision? How well the results can be reproduced. What is the compressive force? Force pushing an object together. How can the emission and absorption of light by atoms be explained? In 1911 Niels Bohr, 1885 to 1962, a Dane who recently had received his Ph.D. from the University of Copenhagen, joined Rutherford at Cambridge University. He quickly began work on the Rutherford model. He published his results in 1913, basing them on three postulates. One electrons only move in certain allowed orbits at discrete radii and with specific energies. That is, their radii and energies are quantized. When in these orbits their radii and energies are constant. The atoms do not emit or absorb radiation. Two electrons gain or lose energy when they jump from one allowed orbit to another. Then they emit or absorb light with a frequency given by HF equals E2, EI where E2 and EI are the energies of the electrons in the allowed orbits. The constant H is called Planck's constant, 6.6 x 10 to 34 J slash hertz, joules per hertz. 3. The correspondence principle. When the electron is very far away from the nucleus classical physics must give the same answer as the new quantum physics. He later changed the third postulate from the correspondence principle to requiring that the angular momentum of the electron be quantized, that is proportional to an integer called the quantum number. The results didn't change, but the derivation of them was more straightforward. This method is presented in almost every textbook. The two drawings below illustrate the emission of light when the electron goes from a higher energy 
to a lower energy orbit and the absorption of light when the electron's energy is increased. In 1885 Johann Balmer had found a formula that accurately calculated the wavelengths of the visible hydrogen spectrum. It was purely empirical that is, there was no physics-based explanation of it. In 1888 Jana Rydberg generalized Balmer's results to allow calculation of hydrogen emission in the ultraviolet and infrared. Bauer was able to explain Balmer's and Rydberg's formulae using the results of his postulates. The equation for the wavelength of the emitted radiation is 1 slash x equals r, i slash m2, 1 slash n2. The numbers m and n are the quantum numbers of the two energy levels. For example, the red line would have m equals 2, n equals 3. The constant r is 0.01097 nm1, making the wavelength of the red line 1 slash, 0.01097, v4, 1 ninth, nm1, equals 656.3 nanometers, in excellent agreement with the experiment. Thus Bower's model is a major advance in understanding the structure of the atom. Why do water waves break as they approach the beach? Water waves rarely break, or form white caps. When they come in contact with a cliff or mountainside shoreline. Waves only break as they approach a gradual decrease in depths, such as a beach. A shoreline with a gradual decrease in depth will produce more spectacular white caps than a wave that encounters a steep decrease in depth. The reason waves break is the result of the way the wave velocity depends on the depth of the water. Consider a water wave with a large amplitude. As the wave moves toward the beach, at first it travels at a constant velocity. As the ocean depth begins to decrease, the bottom of the wave gradually encounters more and more friction with the beach. Causing the lower part of the wave to travel slower than the upper part. As the lower part slows down, the crest, moving faster, moves over the trough. When there is not enough water to support the crest, the wave breaks or forms a white cap. What is a plane mirror? Flat mirror forms virtual images. When will the United States see its next total solar eclipse? Although the entire United States will not see the eclipse, it will sweep across the country from Oregon to South Carolina on August 21, 2017. Mark your calendars. What is the nuclear mass defect? Difference between mass of a nucleus and sum of the masses. 
of the protons plus the sum of masses of the neutrons. Larger the defect, the larger the energy needed to pull. Nucleus apart or energy released when nucleus is assembled. How does a camera lens create an image on the sensor? The diagram below shows what would happen if there were three pinholes. Each creating an inverted reproduction of the object, see page 211. Now, if a converging lens is placed just behind the pinholes it will bend the rays going through it. If the focal length of the lens and the distance between the lens and screen are chosen correctly. Then the three reproductions from the pinholes will all be at the same location. Light rays from the top of the object will converge on the appropriate point on the image. Note that the image is inverted and the same size as the reproductions. How are modern cars designed to decrease the chance of injury in a car crash? If your car hits a barrier or another car, it will slow or even stop. Modern cars are designed so that the front end collapses. Extending the time that the forces of the barrier or other car act, thus reducing the force needed to stop the car. Cars also have airbags that don't act on the car, but on the passenger. When a sudden very large acceleration of the car is detected the airbags are deployed. A chemical reaction within the bag rapidly fills the bag with gas. The front surface of the airbag speeds toward the passenger at speeds up to 180 miles per hour. But the momentum of the passenger is decreased slowly because he or she compresses the airbag. In addition, because the airbag has a large area, the force isn't concentrated, but spread out. This reduces the pressure on the body, reducing the chance of injury. Most recent cars also have side airbags to protect passengers from side collisions. But, airbags have caused injuries to smaller poor sons. Safer airbags inflate less, reducing the force on the passengers. Who, because they have less mass, require less impulse to be stopped. What will happen to the ever-expanding universe? If the acceleration of the universe continues in many billion years galaxies. Beyond the Milky Way and its companions will become invisible because. Their apparent velocity as seen from Earth would exceed the speed of light. In some models dark energy would rip apart all galaxies and solar systems and eventually become so strong that it could tear apart atoms and even nuclei. The universe would end in what has been called the Big Rip. In other models gravity would again take over. Causing the universe to contract and end in the Big Crunch. More measurements of acceleration are needed to decide between these two ultimate ends.
Where are the best surfing beaches? The best surfing beaches are located along the edges of oceans. When wind conditions have produced waves with large wavelengths. Another requirement of a good surfing beach is a gradual decrease in water depth. What is sonar? Sonar, an acronym for sound navigation ranging, is a method of using sound waves to determine the distance an object is from a transmitter of sound. The sonar contains a transducer that converts an electrical impulse to sound. When it transmits and a sound wave to an electrical impulse when it receives. Sound waves, usually brief pulses of ultrasound, are emitted from the transducer. Reflected off an object, and reflected back to the transducer. Electronic circuits measure the length of time it took for the sound waves round trip and use the speed of sound to calculate the distance the object is from the transducer. Sonar is used predominantly as a navigational tool by humans and animals. Dolphins and bats, among other animals, use sonar for navigation, hunting, and communicating. Machines such as depth finders on boats, distance meters used in real estate and construction and motion detectors for security devices all employ sonar. What are some other places where hydraulic lifts are used? Besides their valuable use in auto repair shops, Hydraulic lifts are used in elevating crane and backhoe arms. Adjusting flaps on airplanes, and applying brakes in automobiles. It is the non-compressible characteristics of liquids that make hydraulic devices so useful. Oil is used rather than water because it does not freeze. This heavy crane boom uses hydraulics to lift the boom. What is a magnetic pole? Region of magnetic strength at ends of magnets. Always come in north-south pairs. What materials are effective absorbers of sound? Different materials will absorb certain frequencies of sound better than other frequencies but some of the best absorbers of sound are soft objects. Materials such as felt, carpeting, drapes, foam, and cork are good at matching the impedance of a sound wave and reflecting back very little sound. Materials such as concrete, brick, ceramic tile, and metals on the other hand, are effective reflecting materials of sound. That is why gymnasiums, with hardwood floors, concrete walls, and metal ceilings, have relatively long reverberation times, 
while concert halls furnished with upholstered seats, carpeted floors, and long drapes have relatively short reverberation times. People are also effective sound absorbers. So a full concert hall has different acoustic properties than an empty one. What is a magnetic declination? Angular difference between north as shown by a compass and the Direction to the geographic north pole, Earth's axis of rotation What is the Van de Graaff generator? Named after its American creator, Robert Jemison Van de Graaff, 1901-1967. The Van de Graaff generator has been the highlight of many electric demonstrations in both physics classrooms and museums around the world. The device, created in 1931, consists of a hollow metal sphere that stands on an insulated plastic tube. Inside the tube is a rubber belt that moves vertically from the base of the generator to the metal sphere. A metal comb attached to the base almost touches the belt. The rubber belt carries negative charges from the comb up the tube and into the metal sphere. There, a second metal comb captures the charges. They repel each other and spread over the exterior surface of the metal sphere. As more and more charge is carried upward, it takes more and more energy from the motor to move them up because of the repulsive force of the charges already there. The energy of the charges can reach up to a million joules per coulomb of charge. That is up to 1 million volts. What is an isotrope? Nuclei with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. Why aren't the Van Allen belts present around the North and South Poles? At the equator, the magnetic field is parallel to the ground and the electrons. And protons from the solar wind can become trapped around the field lines. At the poles, however, the magnetic field strengthens, the lines become closer together. And forces on the particles push them back toward the equator. Some of the most energetic particles are able to penetrate the atmosphere where they interact with oxygen and nitrogen atoms producing the natural light shows that are called auroras. Aren't there three laws of motion? What is Newton's third law? Forces are interactions between objects. You need more than one object to have a force. Therefore, if two objects interact, 
each exerts a force on the other. If you push on a friend's hand, his or her hand pushes back on you. If you stand on a floor, you exert a force on the floor and the floor exerts a force on you. Newton's third law of motion states that these two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. If you exert an 800 newton force downward on the floor, the floor exerts an 800 newton force upward on you. Note that Newton's second and third laws are different. The third law describes forces on two different objects. Those forces can then be used with the second law to find out how the motions of the objects are changed. What is an AC circuit? In an AC, or alternating current circuit. The polarity of the voltage source changes back and forth at a regular rate. In the United States one terminal of the source changes from positive to negative and back to positive 60 times each second. Therefore the flow of charge also alternates in direction 60 times. A second as the electrons in the circuit vibrate back and forth. An alternating current is usually found in wall outlets in buildings. Most of our electrical appliances run on alternating current. What is conservation of energy? The energy of the system doesn't change, energy is neither created nor destroyed. The energy put into a system equals the energy change in the system plus the energy leaving the system. True as long as no objects are added to or removed from a system. And as long as there are no interactions between the system and the rest of the world. What is lightning and how is it created? Lightning is an electrical discharge in the atmosphere, like a giant spark. There is still debate about the cause of the separation of charges needed to create the discharge. Atmospheric scientists believe that strong updrafts in the clouds sweep droplets of water upward, cooling them far below the freezing point. When the droplets collide with ice crystals the droplets become a soft mixture of water and ice. As a result of these collisions the ice crystals become slightly positively charged and the water slash ice mixture becomes negatively charged. The updrafts push the ice crystals up higher, creating a positively charged cloud top. The heavier water slash ice mixture falls, making the lower part of the clouds negatively charged. The ground under the cloud is charged by induction. The buildup of negative charges on the underside of a thundercloud attracts the positive charges in the ground. The negative charges are repelled further into the ground, leaving a positively charged surface. What is special relativity?
study of the descriptions and explanations of the motion of objects moving near the speed of light. What happens if your car is on ice? Often then the friction between the tires and the ice is so small that the wheels can exert. Enough backward force on the ice for the ice to exert the force needed to accelerate the car. Note that friction, instead of being a bad thing, as suggested earlier, is needed in this case. What is physical optics? Division of optics that depends on the wave nature of light, polarization. Diffraction, interference, and the spectral analysis of light waves. How is uranium enriched today? Today ultracentrifuges are used for uranium enrichment. A centrifuge is routinely used in medical labs to separate materials of different density. The test tubes are spun rapidly and the denser materials move away from the center of rotation because it requires more centripetal force to pull them toward the center. A gas ultracentrifuge uses a rapidly rotating drum to separate the UF6 with the two isotopes. Gas centrifuges supply about 54% of the enriched uranium today. Each centrifuge is a more effective separator than a stage in a gaseous diffusion plant and requires only 6% of the electrical energy of gaseous diffusion. What makes up dark matter? Many candidates have been proposed, but there is no agreement at this point. Neutrinos with mass could make up a small portion, as could brown dwarf stars that have failed to ignite. More likely candidates are the supersymmetric particles described above. Much discussion recently has focused on WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. If they exist they would be passing through Earth, and so several experiments are underway to detect them. Early results from one experiment claim to have detected two particles. Other experiments look for indirect evidence from gamma rays or antimatter. One result claimed to have found an excess of positrons, but not antiprotons. The composition of dark matter is one of the most active areas of investigation in astrophysics. What are applications of this rule? Autos and trucks that are narrower and have high center of gravities are less stable against rollover. Football players and wrestlers are taught to get down low and spread your feet apart. This stance follows the low and wide rule making your body more stable and difficult to knock over. Your opponent, in order to knock you over. 
would have to exert a force to lift up your center of gravity and then push you over. If you simply stood upright, with your feet close together, you would be tall and narrow and your opponent would have less difficulty pushing you and your center of gravity. What is pneumatics? Whereas hydraulics uses liquids to achieve mechanical advantage, pneumatics uses compressed gas. Since gases can be compressed and stored under pressure, releasing compressed air can provide large forces and torque for machines such as pneumatic drills, hammers, wrenches, and jackhammers. What is a Leyden jar? Device consisting of an insulating jar with conductors on inner and outer surfaces. Stores charges. Modern version is a capacitor. What is the island of stability? All the isotopes of elements beyond lead are radioactive. Some have lifetimes of tens of millions of years, while others are fractions of a second. Nuclear physicists and chemists know that isotopes that have Magic numbers of neutrons or protons are more stable than others. They have proposed that very heavy isotopes with a neutron number around 180 and a proton number around 110 should be more stable than those with fewer or greater neutrons and protons. A glance at the table of elements beyond uranium shows that elements around 110 have longer lifetimes than others. But researchers have not yet been able to create isotopes with enough neutrons to reach this island. What is an electric field? region that surrounds a charged object. Another charged object placed in that field will experience a force. What is gravitational mass? Mass defined by the effect of gravity on object. Gravitational force divided by gravitational field strength, M equals gravitation slash G. What is a rod? Rod-shaped nerve cells on the retina that sensitive to low light levels. Responsible for a general image over a large area, but not fine details. What are the types of waves? Transverse and longitudinal waves are two major forms of waves. 
a transverse wave can be created by shaking a string or rope up and down. Although the string moves up and down, the wave itself and its energy moves away from the source. Perpendicular to the direction of the oscillations. The oscillations in longitudinal waves move in the same direction that the wave is moving. The medium in longitudinal waves alternately pushes close together. Compression, and separates from each other, rarefaction. The best example of longitudinal waves are sound waves. Which are a series of back and forth longitudinal oscillations of atoms or molecules that Form alternate regions of high and low pressure in a medium such as air. Water waves are a combination of transverse and longitudinal waves that move in circles. Just as in the case of transverse and longitudinal waves, energy is transferred but matter is not moved. What is electrical power? Given by P equals IX power equals current times voltage. If not against a wall, how can you stand on your toes? You naturally move your arms forward or bend forward to move your center of gravity forward. What is a laminar flow? Flow of slow moving fluid or object moving slowly through a fluid. Each thin film of water moves slightly faster than the one closer to the surface. What are electromagnetism and optics? Studies how electric and magnetic forces interact with matter. What is translucent? Media that allow light to pass through, but that bend closely spaced rays into different directions. Who developed the ideas of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy? Isaac Newton, 1642-1727, Considering Collisions First described momentum as the product of mass and velocity, but he called it the quantity of motion. Energy took 150 years from the first statement of principles until the terminology was worked out. Collisions also inspired the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens, 1629-1695, who wrote that in the collision of two perfectly elastic spheres the sum of what we today call kinetic energy would not be changed by the collision. The German scientist Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646-1716, gave the name vis viva in 1695 to kinetic energy. 
but how could the conservation of vis viva be extended beyond elastic collisions? Finding the answer to this question took over 150 years. An important contribution was made by Benjamin Thompson, 1753 to 1814. Thompson was born in Massachusetts, but because he opposed the American Revolution he left for England and was knighted by King George III and given the title Count Rumford. While in America he spied for the British. While in England he spied for the French and was a counter-spy for the British. He moved to Bavaria, now part of Germany, and became Minister of War, among other duties. Because he ran an orphanage and wanted to save money he studied heat and invented many items. Like an efficient stove and a coffee percolator. A long series of experiments led him to conclude in 1798 that thermal energy was nothing. More than the vibratory motion of what we know today as the atoms that make up the material. About 20 years before Rumford's work the French scientists Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier. 1743-1794, and Pierre-Simon Laplace. 1749 to 1827 showed that heat produced by a guinea pig after eating was very close to the heat produced when the food was burned. The development of steam engines by James Watt and others stimulated studies of the relationship between work done and heat produced and how to make engines more efficient. Around 1807 the word energy was used with its modern meaning. In 1842 a German physician, Julius Robert von Meyer, 1814-1878, proposed that all forms of energy are equivalent and that the sum of all forms is conserved. He wrote in general, qualitative terms. Although in later essays he included quantitative evidence based on the work done when a gas was heated. But his work resulted in little recognition until the end of his life. About the same time, a British amateur of science, James Prescott Jowell, 1818-1889, began a series of experiments designed to determine the relationship between work done and thermal energy increase that resulted in heat transmitted to the outside. He explored electric generators, the compression of gases, and stirring water. His experiments lasted 18 years. As he continued to publish his results they were taken more and more seriously. The German physicist and physiologist Hermann von Helmholtz, 1821-1894, developed a mathematical description published in 1847 that showed precisely how energy was conserved in many fields including mechanics, thermal energy and heat, electricity and magnetism, chemistry, and astronomy. With his results the scientific community recognized the great achievement of Rumford. Meyer, Jowell, and others and fully accepted energy conservation. What do radio astronomers hear? Radio astronomers detect what sounds like noise, but is actually signals from atoms, molecules, and ions in stars, galaxies, and particles in interstellar and intergalactic space. 
In order to detect these signals, radio telescopes are used. These are shaped like large satellite dishes and are able to detect wavelengths between 1 mm and 1 km. What is a Coriolis force? A pseudo force that exists only in rotating reference frames. Apparent force in direction of rotation. What is an energy transfer? Requires a source, whose energy is reduced, a means of transferring the energy. And an energy receiver, whose energy is increased. What levels of current are dangerous? Approximately 1 ma, 0.001 A, is enough to produce a tingling sensation. 10 ma is painful. 12 to 20 ma is enough to paralyze muscles, making it impossible to let go. 60 to 100 ma causes ventricular fibrillation of the heart. That is, the heart is beating in such a way that it cannot pump blood through the circulatory system. Greater than 200 ma causes the heart to clamp down and stop beating. Did you ever see a piece of paper attracted to a charged rod, touch it, and then jump away? How would that happen? If it touched the rod, it became charged with a charge like that of the rod. And so it would now be repelled. A conductor can also be charged after being polarized, but without touching the charged object. If you bring a large metal object, like a pie plate, near a charged rod, the positive charges will move to the far end of the plate. If you now touch this end briefly with your finger the positive, Charges will be pushed even further away into your finger. When you remove your finger the pie plate is negatively charged. This process is called charging by induction. Rubbing a glass rod with silk will achieve the same effect. The glass rod is positively charged, while the silk receives the excess negative electrons. The glass rod can still pick up small objects, but attracts the negative charges in those objects instead of the positive charges. When the pie plate is charged by induction it will be positively charged. Can a microwave oven be used to dry things? Since water molecules are warmed and eventually boil off by microwaves, anything that is wet can be dried in the microwave. However, there is one very important consideration that must be made before placing. 
The object inside a microwave the object being dried must not contain a great deal of water itself. Microwaves are wonderful at drying wet books, papers, and magazines. But must never be used to dry things like plants or small animals. Living things would be killed by the resonance of water molecules inside their bodies. Where does the bicep muscle attach? The attachment is close to the elbow, so the forearm is a third class lever. What is the Kelvin temperature scale? Based on absolute zero being zero K. A Kelvin, K, is equal to a degree on the Celsius scale. Zero degrees Celsius is equal to 273.15 Kelvins. What is latent heat of vaporization? Energy involved in change from liquid to gas. What is a fluid? Solids retain their shape because strong forces hold the atoms in their places. In a liquid the forces keep the atoms close together, but they are free to move. In a gas the atoms are about 10 times further apart than in. Either solids or liquids and forces between them are very weak. As a result of weaker forces, a liquid or gas can flow freely and assume the shape of their container. They are called fluids. There are two main areas of fluid study. The field that studies fluids in a state of rest is called static fluids. And the field that analyzes the movement of fluids is called fluid dynamics. We will first explore static fluids. How much energy is needed to change the state of water from ice to water to steam? The amount of energy needed to change phase is called latent heat. The latent heat involved in the transition from solid to liquid is called the latent heat of fusion. While the energy involved in the transition from liquid to gas is called the latent heat of vaporization. For water the latent heat of fusion is 334 kJ slash kg. The latent heat of vaporization is 2265 kJ slash kg. Energy must be added to go from ice to water and water to steam. But if steam condenses to water it produces 2265 kJ for each kilogram of steam condensed. That's the reason that steam burns are so dangerous. Almost all of that energy is transferred to your skin. If water freezes it releases 334 kJ for each kilogram of water frozen. In a freezer that amount of energy must be removed by the freezing mechanism.
What are some typical power outputs? The following table was adapted from Wikipedia's entry on orders of magnitude, power. Retrieved on November 13, 2009. Unit example asterisk femtowatt, 10 to 15 watt, 10 FW, approximate lower limit of power. Reception of digital cell phones picowatt, 10 to 12 watt, 1 PW, average power consumption of a human cell microwatt. 10 to 6 watt, 1 carat W, Approximate consumption of a quartz wristwatch milliwatt, 10 to 3 watt. 5 to 10 MW, laser in a DVD player watt 20 to 40 W, approximate power consumption of the human brain. 70 to 100 W, approximate basal metabolic rate used by the human body 5 to 253 W, per capita average power. Use of the world in 2001 500 W, power output of a person working hard physically 909 W, peak output power of a healthy human. Non-athlete, during a 30 second cycle sprint kilowatt, 103 watts, I. 366 kilowatts, power received from the sun at Earth's orbit by 1 square meter up to 2 kilowatts, approximate short time power output of sprinting professional cyclists. 1 kilowatt to 2 kilowatts, rate of heat output of a domestic electric tea kettle to 4 kilowatts, average power consumption per person in the United States as of 2009 40 kilowatts to 200 kilowatts, approximate. Range of power output of typical automobiles megawatt, 106 watts, 1.5 MW, peak power output of a wind. Turbine 2.5 MW, peak power output of a blue whale 3 MW, mechanical power output of a diesel locomotive. 16 MW, rate at which a typical gasoline pump transfers chemical energy to a vehicle 140 MW, average power. Consumption of a Boeing 747 jumbo jet 200 to 500 MW, electrical power output of a typical nuclear power plant gigawatt. 109 watts, 2.074 GW, Peak power generation of Hoover Dam 4.116 GW, installed capacity the World's largest coal-fired power plant 18.3 GW, current electrical power generation of China's Three Gorges Dam The world's largest hydroelectric power plant terawatt, 1,012 watts 3.34 TW, average total power consumption of the United States in 2005 50 to 200 TW, rate of heat energy release by a hurricane petawatt. 1015 watts, 4 PW, estimated total heat flux transported by Earth's atmosphere and ocean away from the equator. Towards the poles 174.0 PW, total power received by Earth from the Sun Yadawatt, 1024 watts, 384. Are there uses for alpha decay? The decay of uranium and thorium produces all the helium that exists on Earth. Most of the helium is mixed with natural gas and is extracted from gas wells. It is expensive to separate and store the helium, but, 
given the increasing needs for this resource. For cooling superconducting magnets used in hospital MRI machines, it is an effort that must be made. Alpha emitting radioactive elements are used in smoke detectors. The charged alpha particles leaving the element are collected on a metal plate where they produce a small electric current. Smoke scatters the alphas, reducing the current, and triggering the alarm. What is weightlessness? Weight is defined as the force of gravity. Strictly, then the only way one can be weightless is to be so far from any massive object. Like a planet or star, that the gravitational field is zero. No human has achieved this state. In a satellite the gravitational field is about 80% as large as it is on Earth's surface. So the force of gravity on an astronaut in the satellite is not much smaller than it is on the astronaut on Earth. What are primary colors? Blue, green, and red of light, cyan, magenta, and yellow of pigments. What are some ways of transferring thermal energy? Heat is the transfer of energy from a warmer to a cooler object. The transfer can occur by two different processes. If the hot object is in contact with a cooler one, the process is called conduction. The faster molecules in the hotter object strike the slower ones in the cooler one. Transferring their thermal energy. The average speed and thus kinetic energy of the molecules in the warmer object are reduced. While those in the cooler object are increased. If the warm object is in contact with air or water, it heats the fluid. Hotter fluid has a lower density, and so it rises. Its place is taken by colder fluid, creating moving currents of the fluid, called convection currents. Convection is a very efficient way of transferring energy from hot to cold objects. The thermal energy can also be transferred even if the warmer object isn't in contact with any other object. The vibrations of the molecules create infrared electromagnetic waves that carry energy. These waves are called radiation. The warmer the object, the more energy in the waves. More energy goes from the warmer to the cooler object than in the reverse direction. So radiation cools the warmer object and warms the cooler one. What is acceleration? Speed and velocity are seldom constant. Usually they vary, and acceleration is a description of how that variation occurs. Acceleration is called the time rate of change of velocity. That is, 
it is the change in velocity divided by the time over which the change occurs. For example, a car might accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour. A sports car might do this in 5 seconds, while an economy car might require 9 seconds. What is a diffuse reflection? Light rays reflect into different, random directions, as from paper. Why is the ocean blue? There are two major reasons why the ocean and most bodies of water appear blue. The first can be observed by looking at the water on a cloudy day and then on a sunny day. There is a rather large difference in how blue the water appears to be on the two different days. Because the water acts as a mirror for the sky. So on a sunny day with a blue sky, the water will have a richer blue color than on a cloudy day. The second reason why bodies of water have a blue appearance is that water scatters short wavelength light more than the longer. In fact, water absorbs some orange, red, and the very long wavelength infrared. As a result it absorbs more energy in the sunlight, increasing its temperature. The much larger amounts of reflected, short wavelength light results in a crisp blue colored body of water. Some bodies of water may take on a more greenish or at times a brownish or black color. Usually this is due to other elements in the water such as algae, silt, and sand. Runoff water from glaciers is very white due to the tiny grains of silt in the water. Still, in the majority of cases, water looks blue. What technologies have developed as a result of superconductivity? Superconductors are most commonly used in large electromagnets. With no resistance, once the current is started, it will continue forever without change. Therefore the magnets dissipate no power and do not heat up. These magnets are most often used in magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, machines. An MRI allows a doctor to view the inside of the human body without using harmful radiation. They are also used in particle accelerators that reveal the fundamental structure of matter by smashing the nuclei of atoms together. The most powerful accelerator is the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, in Switzerland. Another application of superconductivity is the squid. Superconducting quantum interference device, that is an extremely sensitive detector of magnetic fields used in geological sensors for locating underground oil. What famous scientist was placed under house arrest for agreeing with Copernicus? Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642, was responsible for bringing the Copernican system more recognition.
In 1632, Galileo published his book Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems. The book was written in Italian and featured a witty debate among three people. One supporting Aristotle's system, the second a supporter of Copernicus, and the third an intelligent layman. The Copernican easily won the debate. The book was approved for publication in Florence but was banned a year later. Pope Urban VIII, a longtime friend of Galileo, believed that Galileo had made a fool of him in the book. Galileo was tried by the Inquisition and placed under house arrest for the rest of his life. All of his writings were banned. Galileo was also famous for his work on motion. He is probably best known for a thought experiment using the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He argued that a heavy rock and a light rock dropped from the tower would hit the ground at the same time. His arguments were based on extensive experiments on balls rolling down inclined ramps. Many scientists believe that Galileo's work is the beginning of true physics. What are ultrasonic sounds? Ultrasonic sounds are those frequencies above human hearing. Frequencies above 20,000 Hz are not heard by people, but are heard by those animals whose hearing is sensitive to ultrasonic frequencies. For example, dolphins use ultrasonic frequencies to communicate. And bats use ultrasonic sounds as a tool for navigation and hunting. What is the atmospheric pressure? Earth's atmosphere extends approximately 100 kilometers. 328,000 feet above the ground, but it gets less and less dense as the altitude increases. If the density were constant, then the atmosphere would be about 8 kilometers high, 26,246 feet, close to the height of MT Everest. Some 63% of the atmosphere is below that height. The amount of force on an area of 1 square meter is about 101,300 newtons. That is, the pressure is 101.3 kPa. Atmospheric pressure varies with temperature and other conditions. Our weather is mostly influenced by high and low pressure regions, which can deviate by about 5% from normal. The pressure decreases as your altitude increases because the amount of air above you creating the pressure is smaller. At an altitude of 3 kilometers, 10,000 feet. Above sea level the atmospheric pressure is about 70% of what it is at sea level. At 100 km it is 3 millionths of the sea level pressure. How do LCD devices use polarized light? LCD stands for liquid crystal display. A liquid crystal is composed of long, thin molecules that are free to move. 
like a liquid but organize themselves in a regular array like a crystal. In an LCD display the liquid crystal material is in a thin layer between two glass sheets. The bottom sheet is rubbed in one direction so that the molecules in the liquid crystal touching the surface align themselves with the rubbing. The top sheet is rubbed in the perpendicular direction. Aligning the molecules touching it in that direction. As a result, over the thickness of the liquid crystal material, the direction of the long axis of the molecules rotate through 90 degrees. Polarizers are placed on the outsides of the glass sheets in the same direction as the rubbing. When light enters the back of the display it is polarized. As it passes through the crystal its polarization direction is rotated through 90 degrees so that it passes through the second polarizer. Thus light passes through the display, it appears bright. Each glass sheet is coated with a thin, electrically conductive layer. If a voltage is placed across the sheets the molecules align themselves with the electric field. The molecules no longer rotate the direction of polarization of the light. So no light passes through the display. It appears dark. By varying the voltage different degrees of darkness can be produced. An LCD television screen uses liquid crystals composed of long, thin molecules between two glass sheets. An electrical field rotates the molecules in the prixels. So that polarized light either passes through or is blocked. Color filters are added to the pixels to achieve color. The entire display is composed of tiny pixels, each connected to a source of the control voltage. Thus each pixel can be switched between light and dark. Color filters can be placed over each pixel to produce a full color display. In a 1080 pixel high definition television display there are 1920 pixels in the horizontal direction and 1080 in the vertical, for a total of 2,073,600 pixels.